Hello, it's Waylon Chow. Welcome to the Intellectual Property, Module 6B, Part B. In this part, we will look at copyright. In particular, what does copyright apply to? How is it obtained? And what are a copyright owner's legal rights? What does copyright apply to? There are seven different forms of expression that are protected by copyright that are set out on this slide. There are literary works, which, which include, surprisingly, computer programs or computer software, and, and the lyrics of songs. So just the lyrics are considered to be literary works. The actual music would be protected as musical, musical works. Then there's also dramatic works, artistic works, which would include paintings, drawings, and, and, and photographs, and, and even architectural, architectural works. The, the performance of dramatic works or musical works would, is, a, is a separate form of ex expression. Uh, sound recordings is another form of expression, and communication signals, which would include broadcasting signals. For a work to be eligible for copyright protection in Canada, three requirements have to be met. The first is originality. It's, at the very least, not a, a verbatim copy from, from a, a previous work. It has to be an exercise of the author's skill and judgment, and it's not, a, it's not a, a trivial or mechanical exercise that created, created the work. The second requirement is fixation, meaning the work has to be in a fixed medium. So if, if it's music, it has to be recorded in a digital format or it can be written in the form of, of sheet music. The third requirement is some connection to Canada. So one connection is that the work is created within the geographic boundary of Canada or the work is created by a Canadian resident or citizen outside of Canada or a work created by a citizen or resident of a country that is not Canada, but that country has signed a copyright treaty that Canada is, is a party to, uh, such as the Berne Copyright Convention, the Rome Convention, or the Universal Copyright Convention, or the World Trade Organization. How do we obtain copyright protection? Copyright arises automatically on the creation of an original work in a fixed medium. So if you are if if you are seeking copyright for a song, once you create the song and and put it down on on paper as sheet music, then copyright has been created or if you perform the song and and that performance has been recorded, then that performance is automatically copyrighted. Registration is not required to create copyright, but registration is available and is recommended so that a, a presumption of copyright ownership over a specific piece of work is created. The general rule is that the creator of the work is the first owner of the copyright. A different situation is where an employee has created a piece of work in the course of employment. In that, in that situation, it's the employer who owns the copyright. If, if a work is created by an independent contractor, the ownership of the work that is created is determined by the terms of the agreement between the business and the contractor. A copyright can be assigned from one person to another or, or from one person to, to, to another company. So in other words, co copyright ownership can be bought and sold. So one example is you know, back in 1985, Michael Jackson bought the, the Beatles song catalog for, uh, for at that time, a, a huge sum of $47.5 million. That, that song catalog is now estimated to be worth about $2 billion. And Paul McCartney is quoted to have, to have said, you know, the annoying thing I have is I have to pay to play some of my own songs. Each time I want to sing Hey Jude, I have to pay. If you want, want to read the full story about uh, Michael Jackson buying the Beatles uh, songs, uh, there, there's a re very interesting article in Forbes.com. 
if you are the owner of a copyright, what legal rights does that give you? So what you get is a whole bundle of legal rights. So here's a whole, here's a whole long list. I'm not going to read through all of them, but just highlight some of the key ones. The first one is a right to produce, reproduce, perform, or publish a work. So reproduce means that you have a right to make copies or to authorize someone else to make copies of, of that work. When it comes to computer software, uh, which, which is subject to copyright, there, you have a right to license the computer software. So that would normally uh, be thought of as, as, as selling copies of the com computer software. So whenever you buy a piece of computer software, whether it's an app or, or a piece of software like you know, Microsoft Office, uh, what, what, you are, what you are buying is a license uh, to use that software based on certain terms set out in a license agreement. Another, another key right, that, or right that's highlighted here is the right to reproduce, license, or publish sound recordings. Remember we talked about intellectual property law trying to strike a balance in providing benefits, individual benefits, to creators and also providing uh, benefits to society as, as a whole. So when we talk about the duration of a copyright, there is a time limit uh, for copyright. In Canada, a copyright lasts for the life of the creator plus another 50 years. In other countries, specifically the US, the UK, and the European Union, it's a longer period of time. It's the life of the creator plus another, another 70 years. In the case where the corp a corporation is the copyright holder, the copyright lasts for only 50 years. So it's not life plus 50 years, but only just 50 years. For performances, broadcasts, and sound recordings, the copyright is good for 50 years from the time of the performance broadcast or production. Once a copyright expires, the work is said to be in the public domain, which means that you know, anyone in the public can freely use the work, uh, can make copies, can, can publish it uh, without having to pay any royalties. So, so the, that, those works are, are able to benefit all of society once the copyright expires. Uh, so authors from a long time ago, like uh, Shakespeare and James, uh, Jane Austen, rather, uh, all of their books are, are in the public domain. Uh, if you own a, a Kindle, for example, uh, you, can, you can get Shakespeare, on, on any Shakespeare play on, on your Kindle or Jane Austen book, like Pride and Prejudice or Emma, on your, on your Kindle uh, for free because uh, there, there is no copyright holder that is entitled to a royalty uh, for, for those books anymore. Another set of legal rights associated with copyright is called moral rights. Moral rights belong to the author or creator of a work, and, and those moral rights are as good for the same length of time as, as the copyright. Moral rights, unlike copyright, cannot be bought or sold or transferred to another person. So even if the copyright in a work has been assigned to someone else, the, the author or the creator still retains the moral rights. However, uh, a, an author can uh, agree to waive their moral rights. 
So what are moral rights specifically? There are three aspects of moral rights. The first is the right of attribution, which is a right to have the author's name attached to the work. So if it's a painting by Picasso, Picasso is the author or the, the, the creator of the painting. No one else can say that they are the creator of the painting. The second right is the right of integrity, which is the right to prevent others from distorting, mutilating, or otherwise modifying the work to the prejudice of the author's honor or reputation. So this, this right was asserted in, in a case uh, involving the Toronto uh, Eaton Centre. If you've ever uh, been to the Eaton Centre, you may have noticed uh, that uh, you know, down the middle of, of this shopping mall uh, hangs uh, these sculpted uh, uh, Canada geese. So there's like a huge uh, sculpted flock of Canada geese uh, hanging uh, down the centre uh, atrium uh, of, of the mall. And, they, and they've been there since the mall was uh, was was first built uh, in 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 the nineteen late nineteen seventies. Uh, so, in the early in the early nineteen eighties, one Christmas shopping season, the the owner of the mall uh, decided to put little red uh, Christmas bows on the neck of each of these uh, Canada geese. So the the artist who created these Canada geese, uh, Michael Snow, uh, was incensed when he saw these little bows on his beautiful, on his beautiful geese. So he, so he took the, the, the Eaton Centre to court and was able to force the Eaton Centre to take off those little, little red uh, Christmas bows. So he asserted the, the right of the right of integrity, his moral right, uh, specifically the right of integrity. The third moral right is the right of association, which is a right to prevent the work from being used in, in association with a product, service, cause, uh, or, or institution. Royalties are payments to copyright owners in exchange for the use of their copyrighted work. With music, for example, if you if you perform a copyrighted song, uh, you have a legal obligation to pay the owner of that song or the owner of the copyright of that song a royalty. Uh, music does present some uh, specific challenges in how the royalties are collected and paid. Music uh, tends to be performed by many people in many different places. Uh, so there are some logistical difficulties in collecting and paying the royalties. So to, to uh, make it easier, there are these uh, things called copyright collectives. In Canada, the collective, the music collective is called SOCAN. And this is from the SOCAN website. So SOCAN explains that if there was not a collective like SOCAN, uh, and if you wanted to perform, uh, publicly perform a piece of music, you would have to somehow get in touch with the songwriter, lyricist, or music publisher, whoever owns the copyright, and then negotiate a royalty with them. Uh, and, then, and then you would perform the music. But with SOCAN, it's much easier. You go ahead and perform uh, the song, and then you would pay a set royalty to SOCAN. SOCAN would take that royalty and pass it on uh, to the copyright owner. Uh, the royalties are set by SOCAN. There's a long list of set royalty rates depending on how music is used. SOCAN also on their website explains that if you happen to own uh, a recording of music, which could be a CD or it could be a download that you paid for, or even if you owned uh, the sheet music uh, for, for a song, when you perform that music, uh, if it's a sheet music, if you perform it, you have an obligation to pay a royalty. If you have a CD or a download that you paid for and you play that CD uh, for a commercial purpose, let's say you, you play it uh, at a restaurant that you own, uh, then you are required to pay a royalty. That recording and that sheet music only allows you to use the music or the recording for a private non-commercial purpose. Uh, but once you start using it for a commercial purpose, that will trigger 
a requirement to pay a royalty to SOCAN and then SOCAN would pass on that royalty to the copyright owner. 